I tested 20 most popular types of bread and how much they spike blood sugar to help you decide which ones you should eat and which ones you should avoid if you live with diabetes. Here are the 20 breads we're gonna talk about today. We have white bread, whole wheat bread, sourdough bread, keto bread and much more. Now a lot of people including many healthcare professionals will tell you that if you have diabetes you have to stay away from bread completely to be able to keep your blood sugar under control. I don't agree with that at all. Most of the people who say that don't even have diabetes. They don't have the first-hand real-life experience. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist and this is by no means medical advice, but I lived with diabetes for 35 years. I ate every type of bread out there many times and after eating it I tested my blood sugar with the glucose meter. I know exactly what each type of bread does with my blood sugar. Now here are three simple rules I follow to make sure that I always choose the right bread for me and for my blood sugar. Rule number one, I choose a bread that is low in carbs because carbs spike my blood sugar. Rule number two, I choose a bread that is high in fiber because I know that fiber slows down digestion and slows down any blood sugar spikes. Any bread with carb to fiber ratio around five or lower is a good bread for me. And rule number three, I choose a bread that has zero or very little sugar because sugar is what spikes my blood glucose the fastest. That's not what we want. But let's look at all the bread types I have here and talk about a few more tips you can follow to pick the right bread for yourself. Let's start with white bread. A traditional white bread is made of flour, yeast, water, sugar, oil and salt. These ingredients don't sound very healthy, do they? When we look at the label, we see that this white bread has 49 carbs and 2 grams of fiber per 100 grams. That's a carb to fiber ratio of 21, a lot more than 5. Plus it has 5 grams of sugar. And that's why I automatically avoid any kind of white bread. I just don't eat it. Next is brown bread. Most people believe that brown bread is healthier and therefore better for diabetics than white bread. But it really depends how your brown bread is made and what the exact ingredients are. If the brown color is only achieved by molasses and the bread is high in sugar, it can be just as bad if not worse as a traditional white bread. On the other hand, if the brown bread is made with a good amount of whole grain flour, it can be more diabetes friendly than a traditional white bread. So you need to look at the label. We see that this particular brown bread has 46 carbs, 4 grams of fiber and 3 grams of sugar per 100 grams. That's better than the traditional white bread we looked at before. But the carb to fiber ratio is at 11, which is still way too high for me. It would spike my blood sugar way too fast. Remember, I aim for carb to fiber ratio of around 5 or lower. In emergency situations, I would accept something between 5 and 8, but nothing more than that. And that's why I would definitely avoid this brown bread. Next on the list is whole wheat bread. Whole wheat bread is generally a better option for diabetics than normal bread. It's because whole wheat bread is made of fully intact wheat grains which have not been stripped out of fiber and that's very good. But again it's not that simple the food companies know how to trick you. They often make whole wheat bread and add lots of sugar in it to make it taste good. We don't want any added sugar. So again, we need to look at the label. This particular whole wheat bread has 44 carbs and six grams of fiber. That's a carb to fiber ratio of seven, which is something I would be fine with if there was no other choice. But there is a problem with this bread and that's the added sugar. Five grams of sugar per 100 grams. Although this bread is probably better than the previous two we looked at, it would still spike my blood sugar quite fast because of the added sugar. So stay away from this, find a better whole wheat bread. Next up we have multigrain bread. Multigrain bread is a type of bread prepared with two or more types of grain. This can include barley, flax, millet, oats, whole wheat flour and any others. The fact that the bread is multigrain doesn't really tell us much unless we know what types of grain were used. What we're looking for here is kinds of grain that were not refined and they are rich in fiber. Now from my experience most multigrain breads tend to be a better choice than a traditional white or brown bread. But oftentimes the word multigrain is just another marketing trick of the big food industry. The word multigrain makes our brain think that this must be something healthy. But it doesn't actually say anything about how heavily these grains are processed. Multigrain doesn't mean whole grain and that's a big difference. When we go and look at the labels we will see that most multigrain breads are not that great. This one for example has 48 carbs, 5 grams of fiber, that's carb to fiber ratio of 9 and that's too high for me. It shows us that these grains definitely have been processed to some extent. But the good thing is that this bread doesn't have a lot of sugar 
only 1.5 grams per 100 grams. That's not too bad. But still, this particular bread will probably spike my blood sugar very similar to the whole wheat bread we just looked at and in the previous example. And so I would probably stay away from it. Next, we have whole grain bread. Like whole wheat bread, whole grain bread is made up of fully intact grains. This can include barley, brown rice, oats and others, not only wheat. All of these are rich in fiber, vitamins and minerals. In general, whole grain bread is usually one of the most blood sugar friendly options you can find in an average store. This on the screen is a bread that I buy sometimes here in Switzerland. It's an organic whole grain bread. This one in particular has 40 carbs and 10 grams of fiber. That's a carb to fiber ratio of 4. That's perfect. Finally, we have something below 5. This one also only has 1.5 grams of sugar, so all the values here are in check. And based on my personal experience, this bread spikes blood sugar very gently and very slowly compared to all the other breads we talked about before. So I approve of this one. A little side note before we go to the next bread. If you haven't noticed it so far, there are thousands of brands that sell bread in a store or on the internet. You can find a whole grain bread just like this one that I showed in the previous example. It's perfect. And you can also find a whole grain bread from another brand with tons of added sugar, which will spike your blood sugar a lot more. More. That's why I always look at the back label with the actual nutritional values. Next five types of bread on my list are baguette, brioche or croissant, ciabatta, focaccia and cornbread. We can put all these types of bread in one basket and I will be done with this basket very quickly because this basket you should not touch. These breads are even worse than white bread. They have absolutely no fiber, they have a lot of added sugar and they will spike your blood sugar to the moon. It's not food, it's garbage. Now number 10 on my list is sourdough bread. And this is where it's getting more interesting for diabetics. Because sourdough bread is made through a slow fermentation process, which may cause this type of bread to raise blood sugar more slowly than other breads. That's why sourdough bread can be a great option for diabetics if done right. The fermentation process results in a formation of acetic acid, which is the same ingredient that you can find in apple cider vinegar. And if you watched my previous videos, you might know that acetic acid has a beneficial effect on blood glucose levels. Specifically, it does reduce blood sugar spikes after meals with carbohydrates. Now, not all sourdough breads are created equal. So again, we need to look at the label. This particular sourdough has 51 carbs and only two grams of fiber. That's carb to fiber ratio of 23 and our goal is five. So is this sourdough good or bad for our blood sugar? Well, it will probably be better than white bread if their nutritional labels look the same otherwise. But with this specific sourdough, the fermentation process and the acetic acid will not save us. There is just not enough fiber in this bread. And so it will send our blood sugar up very fast. Stay away from this sourdough. We need to look for one with more fiber and less sugar. Next bread I want to show you is pumpernickel bread. This one is prepared with rye flour and yeast and it uses sourdough as the main ingredient. Pumpernickel bread has five times more fiber than a typical bread, which is great and exactly what we're looking for. And because it has sourdough in it, Pumpernickel also contains acetic acid, which we already know will further reduce blood sugar spikes after eating pumpernickel bread. That all sounds amazing. So let's look at the real life example. Let's look at the label and my real life experience with pumpernickel. This particular one has 47 carbs and seven grams of fiber. That's a carb to fiber ratio of seven. That's a bit higher than what I would like to see. But in this case, I would actually be fine with it because this bread has only 0.5 grams of sugar. And I actually had extremely good experience with pumpernickel bread when I lived in the US. It worked extremely well and my blood sugar was not spiking that much after eating it. The truth is that this bread has a very specific robust taste, so some people might not like it, but I personally do. So if you haven't tried pumpernickel bread yet, give it a shot. I approve it. Moving on to Ezekiel bread. This is a type of whole grain bread that gets its name from an ancient formula found in the Bible. It's made from sprouted whole grains like wheat, millet, barley and spelt and legumes like beans, soybeans or lentils. These are all awesome ingredients. Plus it doesn't contain any refined flour or sugar. Look at that. This particular Ezekiel bread has 44 carbs 
80 grams of fiber that's a carb to fiber ratio of 4.5 and it has literally zero sugar this is perfect bread i personally found ezekiel bread one of the best options for my blood sugars it works extremely well for me it has a very slow glycemic response the blood sugar is spiking very gently and very slowly after eating ezekiel bread plus it's full of healthy vitamins and minerals so i definitely approve this one now again ezekiel bread has a specific taste and texture it's a nutty sweet taste and sort of dense chewy texture you might not love it when you eat it for the first time but i personally really like it by the way if you get the ezekiel bread or any other sprouted bread be prepared that it goes bad very quickly you might need to eat it fast keep it in the fridge or even in the freezer if you want to store it for more than a couple days actually if your bread doesn't last long in the room temperature it's usually a good bread it's like a rule of thumb now i still have seven more types of bread to get to and some of them are really amazing but before before I do that, I want to remind you that if you want to chat with me one-on-one -on -one, or if you want to support me financially, there are two ways you can do that. The first option is booking a coaching session with me. You can book 45 or 90 minutes at this link here. The second option is much more affordable. It's my Patreon. When you go to patreon.com slash type one talks and sign up, you get access not only to me, but also to all my bonus content. And there are only 17 spots still available in my Patreon VIP group. Don't miss out because once these are taken you won't be able to join the OG VIP group ever again. Next on the list is rye bread. Rye bread is made with flour from rye grain. Rye grain is rich in various nutrients and has a lower glycemic index than wheat for example. So rye bread is definitely an interesting option for diabetics. Now there are different kinds of rye bread. Some of them good, some of them bad. So as always we need to look at the label. This particular rye bread has 48 carbs, 6 grams of fiber, that's a carb to fiber ratio of 8 which is a bit higher than what I would like to see. Another problem with this specific rye bread is that it has almost 4 grams of sugar so I would stay away from this one. But in general rye bread is always a viable option for me. If I can't find anything better I would go for it. There are different versions and you might be able to find a whole grain rye bread with more fiber and less sugar than this particular one and that will be more blood sugar friendly. Next two types of bread on my list are pita bread and naan bread. Most of the time these are heavily processed, very high in carbs and very low in fiber. Plus they are often used with all kinds of meals that are unhealthy in general and problematic for blood sugar control. So I personally would stay very far from both pita bread and naan bread, although I love Indian cuisine. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing against these breads, nothing in personal, I just don't think they are particularly good for blood sugar control in their traditional form. But the next two types of bread on my list are more interesting keto bread and protein bread. And I put these two together because I see the term protein bread used more in Europe and the term keto bread used more in the US. But oftentimes these tend to be very similar, if not the same thing. Keto bread is definitely a valid option for diabetics because a true keto bread is very low in carbs and it doesn't contain the heavy grains that make traditional bread so carby. Instead, they usually use ingredients like almond flour, coconut flour, psyllium, eggs or even cream cheese. I definitely noticed that when I eat true keto bread my blood sugar will almost not spike at all, especially in the short run. This keto bread has 11 carbs and 8 grams of fiber per slice. This is a carb to fiber ratio of less than 2. It also has 4 grams of protein and no added sugar, so it looks very good. And this bread will definitely not spike my blood sugar. But when picking keto bread or protein bread, we need to be careful. They are low in carbs, but they might be very high in fat and calories in general. So if you're trying to lose weight, keto bread might not always be the best option. Plus, in my personal case, really makes my insulin sensitivity worse. I become more insulin resistant if I eat high fat meals. And also many keto breads might include many artificial ingredients that might not be so great for you. So again, always look at the ingredients list and look at the label. We still have two more types of bread on my list and these are flax and chia breads. These are both very good options for diabetics because both flax and chia seeds are an excellent source of fiber while being very low in calories. Now these breads usually have other ingredients than chia seeds and flax seeds as well so we need to pay attention to what these ingredients are. This particular organic flax and chia bread has 30 carbs, 11 grams of fiber, 
fiber and that's a carb to fiber ratio of less than three which is excellent on the other hand it has almost three grams of sugar still i do approve of this specific bread because i find these values are quite balanced and from my experience the blood sugar spike from this kind of bread is not that bad now again we need to be careful and we need to watch out for marketing tricks because there are chia and flax breads which are basically made of 100% white refined flour with a few chia seeds or flax seeds on top thrown on top of the bread which is nothing like what we are looking at here these values would be completely different and this bread is basically just white bread so watch out for that we really must be always looking for bread with low glycemic index carb to fiber ratio of no more than eight but ideally five and as little sugar as possible and that way our blood sugar after eating bread will not be that high another way i was able to lower my blood sugar aside from choosing the right bread was reducing the amount of bread i eat in general and even replacing it with my favorite diabetic super foods if you want to know what they are click on this video and watch it next in that video i talked about 25 superfoods that fixed my diabetes i will see you there ciao